Hey everyone, it's Let's Talk on your tube, coming to you with the up and coming business and entertainment from Detroit to all over. I'm your girl, Miss Wani, sitting beside your boy, Mr. Get It Out the Mud, and our guest host, Sai. Today's show will be very interesting. Our topic is parenting, and of course, we have some very special guests for you on today's show. But before we get straight into everything, we're going to take a flashback of last week. So just stay right there, and we'll be right back. On today's show, we are talking about parenting. We are breaking that down, of course, into three segues, and we are talking about co-parenting, child support, and raising and loving your child. We had a debate the other day on Facebook about should the man in the household pay all the bills? And I'm like, not no more. It's not, they're not making it accessible for us to do that no more. When my granddad was coming up, yeah, he paid all the bills because Christ was paying way more than what the property value was, you know? But now, I mean, to buy a house and Three bedroom house in Brighton was like seventy thousand. You know what I'm saying? So how do you expect me to take everything myself? You know what I'm saying? When I and then they don't know how to support you. Okay, I ain't gonna cuss him out and call him out his name today because he said he can't get the baby. And even though I done went through this a thousand and one times and I done had to pick up the baby because he said he couldn't do this, and now I'm late for work. And like he said, um, the mother of his child had to respect and I had to respect his current girlfriend, but the, it was just the way that it all came about. That's where the respect, because I didn't have respect for her. I was like, the way that you entered into this situation, and I was mad at him, I wasn't mad at her. Well, I was to a certain extent, because I was like, as a woman, you should know better. And I said, but you not should. The standard, the standard you hold women at period. Right. Yes, you should okay. know better. You should want to be presented in a different way, and you should be mad at him because he didn't present you, you the correct way to me. Right. As a mother, I said, because you got to deal with me for the rest of your life. I feel like sometimes y'all take away what we go through too. You know, I mean, we don't go through the physical y'all things. Y'all go through some stuff, but y'all don't go through. Don't don't say that. I won't tell you what to say, but you shouldn't say that y'all go through that the same thing that a woman who is fully not carried, and not physically, not mentally, not emotionally, spiritually, none of that. To have a child is a whole experience in every inch and level I just named. We want to get a housing program where we house these mothers and fathers that are raising their kids on their own. Um, give them about a year and then we shoot them off and you get you ready for the world. They do counseling classes, they do financing classes, they do health classes. So it's literally taking over the world. And then I want to touch on our youth because obviously that is our future. Um, and if we don't raise them, um, they're going to fall for everything. Because a man is supposed to be strong and supposed to be that rock. You feel mm -hmm. me? And me, I feel I feel less than a man when I can't do something. If, if, if my girl called me and be like, uh, Tyler needs some diapers. I feel less than a man to say, hey, I can't even do it. I'm not gonna tell her that. I don't even think I have ever told. If they call me, if somebody call me, like, I, you know what I'm saying? I don't think I have never told not somebody that I can't to make do it. Happy. it. You feel me? I feel I, like, I'll be like, I'll call, all right, all right, I'll call Let me right call back. grandma, yeah. grandpa, you know auntie, and um, that's, because and as that's, a man, that's what you're supposed that's to do. Where, like that's the mama. That's, that's, on that mother. So now when she said, excuse me, fuck you, you a bum ass nigga, you can't blame her because that's like, that's what it is. You gotta, this let's talk. You got it. And uh, you got it that's good. the segment. And if your baby mamas don't know, you know now. Nah. <laughs> don't deal with him. Hey, y'all. What's up? It's Let's Talk on your tube. I'm your girl, Miss Wani. Wait, Mr. Get It Out the Mud. And our guest host, Sai. On today's show, we are talking about parenting. We are breaking that down, of course, into three segues. And we are talking about co-parenting, child support, and raising and loving your child. On today's show, we are also going to do a recap of last week, with it, which is youth. But before we get into that, we are going to introduce our very special guest. And today's show, we have our CEO of Blessed Woman United. Our girl, your girl, Lay. Yeah. Hi, Lay. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. That's good. That's good. How's life? Everything is good. Everything's great, Grand. That's good. So, Lay, I'm going to go straight into the best news, good news I think that you have. Before we get into Blessed Women, Lay just got engaged. Yay. 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 Hey, they've been taking them off the street lately. <laughs> <laughs> I see, like, bitchy engagement. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. You're very welcome. So, with Blessed Woman and becoming a newly engaged woman, what is life like now? 
Um, it's busy, very, very busy um, right now, trying to make sure that I stay on top of business as well as planning a wedding. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just busy, you know, trying to make sure that I can do an event before I actually depart. But that's a whole different time conversation. But yeah, it's just busy, super busy. Okay, okay. So before we go on a little bit more about your um, new life as an engaged woman, let's talk about blessed women. And tell me about um, life um, before blessed women got started and what made you start blessed women united. Um, the way that Blessed Women United had started was based off the fact that once I found out um, that I was pregnant, I wanted to do something um, that would collaborate women together um, to bring them together as moms. You know, there's the breastfeeding moms and there's the formula moms. Like, it's always segregated and separate. Um, so I tried to build this um, community of women where we could bring all that aside and just kind of let their hair down and be like, oh, well, you breastfeed, I did formula. You know, this worked for you because of why. This worked for you because of X, Y, and Z. So it was kind of like one of those things um, to segue each other together. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, that kind of actually formed Hunter's Play Day, which is um, in honor of my daughter, where we'll get moms together and they can just kind of relax and let the kids play so that we can connect with one another. Um, so that's really what it kind of started. And it, it continues to evolve um, more so now. It's kind of taking on that form and shape of just women um, as a whole. And we'll separate, you know, the mom and the children to kind of um, meet the needs of what every woman has. Um, some people don't realize, you know, a lot of women go through depression or postpartum depression and didn't even realize it. So I tried to, um, I guess, wedge that gap in a sense and kind of be like, oh, it's okay, you know what I'm saying, to talk about it. It's okay, you went through it, I went through it too, you know. Um, or, you know, just kind of the everyday things, you know, with the baby daddy or the new boyfriend, kind of those things, just to kind of wedge that gap. Right, right. So okay. is it more like a counseling session or, or say girl talk, like get together, pampering, stuff like that? It can be. Um, mm -hmm. I aspire to do certain things like that, but obviously when you have 10 or more people, it's kind of hard to, for them to accommodate people that way. Yeah. So um, I would love to do it like I want to do uh, my next event. Hopefully it will be like a yoga and wealth kind of in thing to uh -huh. kind of fitness, and, you know, talk about money and how you can, you know, what works best for you, whether it's saving or not. So everybody should save, but um, what method of saving works for you. So it's kind of like one of those things. Um, so it's kind of like a women empowerment in a sense. I kind of motivation. I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll use it in that way. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's dope. That's yeah, dope. Yeah, her that's events cool. are pretty dope. I've been to some of her events, and they're definitely oh, dope. Oh yeah, we yeah. definitely. So, yes. so, 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 is, is it a, a he man woman hate club? It's not no. a he man woman. <laughs> 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 are we allowed to come through and like it's show some love? It's women empowerment. It's bringing Can women we? together. Okay, you, know? so you don't have to hate women in order to bring men together. I'm saying, okay, I so, mean, women so together. So, is there any way that we can help out though? Like, you know, some dudes really feel that way. They yeah. feel the same way y'all feel that mm -hmm. women need these services. So, is there any way that mm -hmm. men can actually get involved? Yeah, if you want to serve, I mean, servanthood is something beautiful. You can't. Oh, so, yeah. oh, I mean, so, you, so we gotta be y'all slaves. No, 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 but I mean, if you guys ever wanted to come out and say, hey, you know, I want to be of service, kind of in a sense, I don't want to say pamper, but you know, just to be a help, I don't mind. I wouldn't, okay, it's not anything up. negative about it. It's just a thing about it because women will clam up, especially if it's somebody's there and it's a man and they're like, oh, well, I don't want to talk about, talk. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, want to talk about nervous, my depression sure. or I don't want to talk about this, that, and the other in front of a man. So um, we kind of try to keep it closed in. But yeah, if you want to come, I would love to have you. you All right, you might have to slide off in there. <laughs> See what y'all don't like us. I'm ready to serve. Yeah, I'm ready. Look at it. That's what I'm talking about. Look, y'all got it. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to find some single women. <laughs> 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 single women like hell. So who need a, uh, who need a husband in their life? Either way. <laughs> Either way, huh? That's cool. How can I help? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so once you started Bless Women, mm -hmm. um, what was it like um, just getting women together? What, was that an easy factor? Did you find that it was um, kind of hard for you to get the women together, get them to come to your events? Um, was that all hard? How was your communication with um, other women or other people in general? Um, in general, I will say that it was hard because, so let me back up. The reason why I moved back home to Detroit from Dallas was because um, it was put on my heart that there's a divide, a big divide. In so wait, 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 I'm sorry. Um, you bagged up. So did we start Bless Women United in Dallas or did we start in Detroit? The idea came to Dallas, but I sat on it for two years. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I sat on it for two years. And then um, once I had finally made the decision to move back home, it was like really pressed on my heart to do it. Um, and like I said, it was like a divide um, between women and trying to get women together. Like I said, the whole breastfeeding or I'm with my, the father of my child or I'm, you know, my baby daddy, we going back and forth. So it was kind of like that thing. So um, 
I didn't forget. Anyway, so it was kind of pressed. So then what I did was that, you know, I just reached out and said, hey, let me connect with women and their kids. Women love their children. They're going to do whatever it is that they need to do for the children. So I said, let me attack. Well, not attack, but let me attack in a sense by getting kids. So everybody wants to do something for the kids, something that's free, something that's fun. So that's the way that I branched into it. Like, hey, you know, and I kind of put it out on Facebook and, you know, kept playing it and playing over or I'm sure sharing it over and over again. So that they can see like, oh, I'm really about the kids and kind of explain to them what I'm doing. What's the purpose of me being here? Um, so that's the way that I did it. Yes, is it hard to get women together? Obviously, because there's a pride issue um, that I personally feel amongst women. Like, I don't want to do this because she's here and she, you know, she's light skin. Let me just say it. I'm just be funny about that. But, oh, she's light skin, so I don't want to do it because I'm dark skin. You know, st stupid stuff like that will stop allowing people or women in general to come together. Somewhere and it's not here. that deep. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't care if you're dark skin, light skin, white, black, Puerto Rican. I don't, it doesn't bother me. My goal is to get women together to really talk about what's really going on and try and stop trying to say oh well, I can do it by myself and I'll figure it out on my own and yeah. then you know like I said they get into this bigger deep depression mode so that was the whole point of why overly, I, I call it overly independent yes females mm -hmm. go, sometimes females go so hard to be independent yep. they forget that sometimes you people period don't do that yep. that you need somebody you always need somebody to lean on you always need somebody to talk to you need accountability yeah and people will be like I can do it myself mm -hmm. you know he's it definitely that's definitely a problem so how do you get over these issues besides the kids how do you overcome some of these um challenges you do to get to get the actual females together like what else do you do so what i'll do is my thing is like um i watch people i'm an observer so i watch somebody and i watch what they post and i'll sit there and think and then literally like something to drop in my spirit and i'll just put it out there to let them know that i'm listening to them even though i'm not necessarily like oh you know this is for you or let me text you I just put it out there on social media so that it can kind of give them a glance like, oh, you know, somebody was listening to what right. I, I said. I was just talking about that. That's so crazy. Mm -hmm. Something like that, yeah. yeah. So I just kind of, I kind of hit it the opposite way just by going back through social media. So you kind of talk about um, Facebook. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you did this only on Facebook, but you kind of had something like a, um, I don't know if you were called like a podcast where you went live mm -hmm. and you kind of talked about your experience um, once you had your daughter mm -hmm. um, and your experience with her and, um, her and her dad mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. and you moving back um to michigan and mm -hmm. not having your family in dallas um what was that like what made you start um that and just to go live and, and express that so it kind of started off as a co-parenting thing like i said at the beginning once i found out that i was pregnant i knew that we were going to co-parent but obviously you know the challenges i've never been a parent before so the challenges of dealing with somebody else you don't know how people work and they change up so mm -hmm. stuff like that so it was kind of like let me focus on co-parenting like and it was a movement like where I'm doing it as I'm saying it like I'm doing it right here now or it just happened five minutes ago so literally stuff would just happen and I'd be like oh okay cool like this is what's happening and um, I went about it that way and that's how I kept it going just started by co-parenting and then I just kept going live and then somebody would say oh you know can you talk about this and I'd be like sure and I would be like yeah and I just talk about it and go live that's, that's what's up. That's what's was blessed woman a part of part of that as well mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay yeah that's how it kind of there's so a lot of originals do you have any do you have any um big like contributors like who are is it all solo was it all independent is there anybody else that's helping out or I have people who will say like, oh, you know, let me come and volunteer. Like, I'll help you. Like, whatever you need, like, say something. But right now, my biggest contributors are my parents. They believe in sowing a seed to meet every need. So they'll sow into my life. Um, and like I said, people will come and volunteer. Like, how can I help? And I appreciate that. Like, for me, I'm about to do, it's bigger, go big or go home. Like, I'm not about to just throw in a little shindig, have a couple balloons here. No, we about to go all out. We about to get some balloons, blow up the letters, have BWU, like my last event. It was my first event, but I wanted to be so big. So I had the hashtag, I had the BWU in the background, I had balloons, I had uh, candy. I mean, it was everything. So it's like, yeah, if you can come help me set up because it's about to take two hours, I would love for you to come help me, please, because that's just what, you know. But at the same time, like I try to make everything as free as possible. I hate to charge anybody because I want them to leave something with an experience. I'm not trying to get your money. Right. I don't want your money. But at the same time, that is a way for them to sow seeds. So sometimes, you know, I'm like, eh. And then, you know, good things do cost. You know, mm -hmm. nothing is free here. You know, even though you're doing a lot, you know, you still might need a contributor. Somebody, mm -hmm. if, even if... I coach football, okay. and you, you do something like that, you want people to contribute to that. Correct. And you don't want to take their money from them, right. but it helps them out, and it can cost. Right. You know, we're not rich, we're doing it, so that's why I was asking, maybe we can do some shout-outs off this show, you know, okay. trying to reach out to some certain people to okay. see if the people can help out, help you out with Because you always definitely looking for sponsors. Yeah, sponsors. Right, of course. Yeah, we make sure we're looking for you. Know? <laughs> yeah. If I get to that, yeah. yeah get you know, to a good yeah, sponsor, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah what's yeah. the thing going to be? What? Yeah, what's the thing going to be? <laughs> <laughs> 
And then he told me, you know, yeah, but yes, sponsors are always good, yes. you know, in each end. <laughs> so for, um, yeah. I know that's that you dope. are always that's looking dope. for um, people to yes. assist and stuff like that. And then, like you say, you do welcome um, men and women, definitely in that. Um, and then I also will add on to that. Use your resources that you have. Um, my best friend's a life blogger, lifestyle blogger, so she takes pictures from me as well. And she'd be like, hey, you know, I have this, you know, uh, little centerpiece. Do you need it? And just, you know, you know that people have certain things. So just mm-hmm. ask them, and they'll more than happy be willing for to sure. lend it to you. And be like, and those, oh, yeah, little, you little things help. Yep, I ain't going to lie, that event we did. That, them little things help yep. they count that's why i'm asking now like with this show hopefully we can push a couple people to see it and oh i want to get you know get done because mm-hmm. what you're doing is very positive and definitely needed um i think a lot of uh did y'all catch the movie acrimony at all no, you know i seen see it. well i don't get too deep into it but the lady was in a counselor and um that was a big part for black people to actually see a lot of people don't black people community don't like seeing counselors they don't like mm-hmm. talk to nobody mm-hmm. so you kind of bridging the gap with them actually talking period yeah, you know yeah. people a lot of black people shut down mm-hmm. just, i'm just i ain't gonna even, even gonna get to just the females my people in general yeah, yeah. the black community just shut down when they have a problem they, they this their age they have a hard time with speaking out about anything mm-hmm. they have a problem they deal with it on hands they can't do it on hand just is what it is they deal with it so that talking that postpartum you just want that postpartum stress and stuff that's mm-hmm. Definitely something that females need to actually talk to somebody about and feel comfortable enough to bridge that gap. You might end up being like a thousand females counselor. Like this might be a you might have to quit your regular day job. Come on, you're going to charge. Because people think what you're doing like is very very needed. I don't even think you might know how much is actually needed. You know what I'm saying? The female, a lot of problems you having when we get deeper into the, the segment about child support and stuff that's probably one of the reasons they're not talking and not okay. they're not problem solving mm-hmm. you know they're just shutting down they're getting overly independent i don't selfish. need nobody so you know yeah, yeah. selfish yeah. ungrateful they just, all this comes with that not you know what i'm saying then you have that problem so what you're doing is definitely i'm gonna give you big ups okay. don't let me i'm just don't 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 hey uh don't be on my head i'm getting all soft and mushy right now but <laughs> I'm showing a little love when this is from. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. We gotta deal. We gonna gotta deal with it when they don't talk to nobody. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so we need to be That's making true. so you straight. Cause uh, go on over there to that women's. Yeah, get over there to the class. Cause That's real. I ain't what you argue with you all day. You know what I'm saying? So definitely. But that kind of going go to women. Up. You know, a lot of women. I'm not even. That's when you say not just about the kids, but mm-hmm. a lot of women after they have kids, you know, become about their kid or become about their kid mm-hmm. and they guide and they more so lose their own life. Their own or, life. Their yep. selves in general, so yeah, or slack with the is. kid because mm-hmm. now yeah. they really phys- mentally yeah, can they, handle they it, you know what I'm saying? It, yeah. And that's deep, man. We hear it all the time about kids getting injured and hurt mm-hmm. and left and abandoned. And we and I down them, I talk junk about it. I just feel like you, how could you? But we're not there, and she's mm-hmm. she, she being hurt. She's you're not there, you don't know what's going through their head, you don't know what they're going through, the pressure right. they're, they're, they're enduring every day, right. yeah. and that's deep. That's all I'll give you big ups for that for sure. Yeah. You just gotta read signs with people like some people um i was kind of vocal i'd just be like oh you know something something and i dropped like little hints to say hey like something's wrong um but sometimes people aren't mind readers so they're not going to be able but you mm-hmm. this at the same time you kind of have to like pay attention to their mood swings and stuff like that so Definitely. yeah so um we're starting <coughs> blessed women and also just going live and talking about your um, co-parenting experience um was it ever like a piece of your pride that kind of got in the way? It was like, no, I really don't want to talk about my experience. I don't really want people to be in my personal person space, yeah. and especially not the world to mm-hmm. be in my personal space. So was that like a, a big thing for you to um, express that um, to the world just about what's going on with you parenting and um, bringing women together? Because, mm-hmm. um, you know, most of the time, everybody, especially in the city of Detroit, people say, that's another thing I want to know. What made you not do in Dallas but versus bring it to Detroit? Because people be like, you know, down there, oh, everybody's sweet. Mm-hmm. But in Detroit, everybody is catty. Why mm-hmm. you want to start something with a bunch of women in Detroit and we all catty and nobody want to talk about this and this, this, that, and the third. So... Kind of two questions. In one. <laughs> did your pride get in the way, and what made you bring it to Detroit? Um, did my pride get in the way? Yes and no, because a lot of um, a lot of people knew us, and uh, we were coworkers, so that's how we met originally. So then it was like putting my business out there, like for them to see, like, oh, Lay and you know, so and so are going through this. So it was like 
kind of awkward but once I was like you know what one of the girlfriends that uh I first told that I was pregnant before I told my parents or anybody she was like yeah I'm an open book so whatever you need just let me know and then that kind of just resonated with me like well somebody else is going through it they may not say it but somebody's going through it it's a secret person you know hiding behind the closet so that's what made me want to just be like okay let me pour my heart out and you know share it and bless somebody else you know um and say you're not alone in it you know yeah. what I'm saying you're not sure. doing it by yourself so that was the reason and then I didn't have the unction to do it in Dallas. I just didn't. Um, I don't want to sit there and say like the women were more put together. That wasn't the case, but it was just in my heart, like I said before, it was a really big pride issue and you couldn't get women together to come and commune, like you said, be catty. Mm -hmm. You know, like, why would you want to do it here? So that was kind of the thing. It was fear, even when I did my first event, when I first moved home, um, I was like, ain't nobody going to come. I had 10 moms at my first event. Like, and that's good. That's uh, good. That's yeah. the starter. So I was like, you have to, you have to, Oh, or applaud yourself for the small, yep, the small yep. things, and then well, obviously you'll work yourself up, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, to twenty five hundred people coming out and all the kids eating all your food. Like, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, but it was just, it was just a thing that I didn't have it in Dallas. So it was just like I was sat on it for two years mm -hmm. and I just let it build. And that's like home, though. It it's right. not exactly right. like home. Right. You know, you could come from yeah. giving back to that because that would be my first place to get back to. Mm -hmm. If I if our clothing line or whatever we doing blow yeah. up, man, I'm coming back to Detroit first because yeah. yeah. I know. I know where they come. I can hear everybody's story. Mm -hmm. It's nothing like knowing. Like I lived in them streets. I went to those schools. Mm -hmm. I seen those murders. I, you know, I seen mm -hmm. this problem here. Then when I take care of that, then we can branch off. Yeah. Then we can go here and go there. And maybe we can get national global. That should be the ultimate mm -hmm. goal. But my first goal will come back home too. And I will feel well, what you're doing. It takes a lot of courage. So to do it somewhere mm -hmm. other than home. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like double, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you yeah. really don't know these people. Like, yeah, exactly. we know you. Some people went to school with you. Right. You know, your grandma knows so-and-so, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Even if women exactly. here are cat, yeah. you know the type of... Yeah, you know, you know how to... But like you that. don't yeah. really know. I mean, I mean, how long were you in Dallas? All uh, three years. Yeah, so three years is like... You might know the, you you might know the people around the corner year, from you. You know what I'm right, saying? Exactly. You might know the guy at Walmart or the, the regular post person if they don't change, you know? Mm -hmm. But that's about it. So it's like coming home... It probably it was a good look for you because it probably was more. Uh, it took less courage. It took less mm -hmm. to do it. Once the now is off and and going, now you can do more. Mm -hmm. you, you build up more more courage and you build up more more things to do, more mm -hmm. resources, more people want to help you out. Right. You know, so it was cool to come home. I'm, I'm happy you came home because I, I think we need the most. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, it's a different home. breed of women here. Yeah. <laughs> we need it's you. Not it's a lot of in the water. Who will bring that, you know, yeah. to the city. So yeah. our own people, and that's. You know what we bring on the show yep. everybody who are our own people um of course we always welcome people from other states Correct. and um things of that such but our own people we always want to help our own people because that's where we yep. from right. and a lot of people um, a lot of people run from that yeah like, yep. Yep. Knows, yep. like a lot of people run a lot of people will start something like like what you're doing somewhere that where it's not really needed mm -hmm. and they go real big with it and they do this big thing it's like well why you didn't go to where these people are really going through this mm -hmm. people was really dying and killing mm -hmm. their kids and all of a sudden like really going crazy and you're going to take to the birds where they got all this money the day biggest fear is what car they gonna drive today. You're like, oh, we having a mom's day. You know, y'all just went to pamper each other today. Yeah. Y'all put a couple yeah. thousand yeah. to get y'all nails and hair done. You know what I'm saying? Get the cars detailed. Yeah. Got a babysitter. That's you know thing about how she like how you just said about the the money. Mm -hmm. A lot of um, women group um, they like clubs or things of that such. They do. They they cost money and they um, don't cost just no little yeah. money. Mm -hmm. um, because it is more so of a, a, a pampering thing and yeah. things of that such. That's what but really like you said about yours, it's a free event mm -hmm. because you're here to actually help people. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about the money. Mm -hmm. I know in one of our um, earlier shows we talked about um, how any business that you have shouldn't just be for profit. Yeah. Right? It should be for your service. Yeah. It should be for Go. customer mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So we definitely applaud definitely. you on that. Yeah. yeah. That's always wonderful. Um, but... I guess we can go into a little bit of co-parenting only because mm -hmm. you talk about it within um, Blessed Women. You talk about it. Um, like I said, you used to go live about it. Um, so how is co-parenting going for you? Um, you kind of let us know that um, your daughter, um, dad, is um, in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So he doesn't stay here in the city. So okay. I think for a lot of people, that's like a big whoa. Mm -hmm. um, so just give us yes. a little insight, if you could, on how yeah. um, co-parenting um, it's challenging with him not being here. Um, 
I try to keep him, you know, involved, obviously, like, I mean, I'm not about to tell, like, every move, but, you know, like, some of the big things, you know, like, hey, Hunter's doing this, or Hunter has a dance recital, so that he can obviously make ways for him to get here to support her. Um, it's an interesting journey. Um, early on, literally, I was upset, and I was mad, and the Lord was like, I'm going to deal with what's over here, and I'm going to deal with what's over there. You don't try to cross-mingle. You figure out what's going on over here, and I'll take care of that situation. And I literally, I got on my knees, I boo-hoo cried, and I was like, Lord, I just give it all to you. Like, just extra. But at the end of the day, it became revelation for him. Like, he understood, like, okay, Lay is just asking me to, you know, pick up Hunter from school because she gets out of work late. Like, simple things like that. Like, and I didn't fight with him. I would go out of my way to find somebody else to go pick her up from school if he couldn't do it. You know, like, those little things. Like, I'm not about to nitpick with you. Um, and... We just co-parented from there and, you know, we keep it short. It's black and white with me. Um, I'm not about to cross no gray lines. There's no funny. We're going to run it like a business. If that's how you want to present yourself, we're going to run it like a business. Don't ask me for nothing. Well, not, not like that, but don't ask me, you know, to be funny. You know but what I'm saying? But that's kind of how it got to be in certain situations. It not to keep yeah. it sticky and nothing like that. It kind of got to be cut and dry. Yep. If you're late, you know, on something or you got something extra going on, it can't be like that. It got to be strictly but, about uh, the kid. I or feel, some stuff. I feel physically it shouldn't go further because feelings involved oh right. yeah right, but right, when right. it comes to the kids and i feel this way i i agree with the co-parent 100 percent, but people fall short mm -hmm. sometimes and i feel like we should be each other kind of support system when it comes to our child if i didn't have my child with you i wouldn't you wouldn't owe me nothing you still don't owe right. me nothing right but by us having that that child maybe even two i have two with the same mother okay. you know i might fall short mm -hmm. i mean it's hard out here mm -hmm. people a lot of you don't want to admit that but i mean jobs is, they don't pay nothing yeah. um we had a debate the other day on facebook about should the man in the household pay all the bills and i'm like not no more mm -hmm. it's not they're not making it accessible for us to do that no more mm -hmm. when my granddad was coming up yeah he paid all the bills because christ was paying way more than what the property value was you know but now I mean, to buy a house and three bedroom house in Brighton was like seventy thousand. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So how do you expect me to take everything myself? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When I and then they don't know how to support you on that. So I feel like when it comes to that, if he like you said, I, I applaud you for that too. Like find another way and not making that. I don't know mm -hmm. females, and I ain't gonna put too much bids on. But I know females that will make that a problem. Right. You can't get them. I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. So what? Our daughter gonna go to jail? Or you gonna send her? You know what I'm saying? What are you gonna do? You know I can't leave work. Right. Like you know what I'm saying? But then you got guys to take advantage of it too. Right. So that's why I don't I don't I don't bash females. I understand it's both ways. Mm -hmm. But when you do have a situation, I feel like it should be a support system mm -hmm. that's set up. And if you give me, I give you. You help me, I help you. Right. Like it's no more of debating of who is doing the most or mm -hmm. what you're allowed to do. That's that's the one thing I have against the courts. Mm -hmm. They kind of give you something you gotta follow it. Mm -hmm. And like and you there's nothing that's gonna be like that. Everything has its ups and downs and everything has its times where you're not gonna be able to come to that to do that. So I, for you doing just saying that one situation right there is like mm -hmm. dang she dope because I know people that be like if you can't get there she gonna be there like but wait what? Would, you, would, you, would you say with that situation that you had to grow a little bit more yeah, patience oh, yeah in order to be like okay I ain't gonna cuss him out and call him out his name today because he said he can't get the baby and even though I done went through this a thousand and one times and I done had to pick up the baby because he said he couldn't do this and now I'm late from work. Did you have to grow a little bit more patience? I did have to grow. I did have okay. to grow because it was it was okay. difficult. Hey, give us some water. Give us some water. I just wanted. To, I, I just knew that couldn't be an easy. Yeah, job. just it to jump from like and then to it's your first, your first. only child. Mm -hmm. Okay, first yeah. Only. So yeah, I know to just I know for some people when they had that second child, it's kind of like a breeze. All right, mm -hmm. I already know yeah. he may, he may not. Yeah. You know, this is that and the third. But I know a lot of things having a kid. It, it, it grows your patience, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little yeah. babies, woo -wee. Because not, not just with the kids, though. It with, with yeah, and parent. right, with the parent. And I won't just say the father. It's yeah. with the parent, yeah. period. It's because not only females go through issues mm -hmm. with their um the fathers of their child, but mm -hmm. men also go through issues as well Correct. with their mothers of for the sure. child as for well. Sure. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah. I'm agree. Yeah. I'm, never, gonna, I'm not going to bash y'all. I'm gonna give y'all props. It's definitely I'll be back But I think sometime. also with that you have to communicate. This is my thing. Like if I tell That's you, you to ask you for a week, you like glad you got married. You know what I'm saying? There you go. This is my thing. Like, 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 hey, there's me not. My girl is not doing it. 
He don't even call my phone. She only say good morning so when I roll Tell us a few things that you had to gain with this situation. So we got patience. We got communication. Mm -hmm. What else did you have to gain with your co-parents and what um, else? The, and I don't want this to sound bad, but the uh, inconsistency. Um, I had to be like, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? And I had to have a backup plan. Like, I literally had like mm -hmm. three or four people backed up. Like, if you mm -hmm. can't do it, all right, scratch you off the list. Mm -hmm. Who's next? Who's next? Auntie or mm -hmm. play Auntie. Literally, when I say that um, I started working on weekends and I'm in Dallas, Texas, I don't have any family. Um, literally, my church room was like, hey, you know, my daughter watches kids. I don't know her from a hill of beans. I know her reputation, but I don't know her like that. She was like, my daughter, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, a couple of people vouched for her. I didn't know this lady. I literally gave my kid up so that she could watch her. I mean, it was an angel from God, but still, she came through. If I couldn't find somebody, she was like, Lay, you know, I got you, just let me know. And it's the communication, like, hey, I'm always at least a week and two weeks in advance. What's your schedule? Like, I know you get your schedule two weeks out in advance. I know on this day that I close. Well, let me talk to your mother. How is she doing? Can she pick her up? Oh, not her? Oh, what about Janisa, her cousin? So I've always had that backup plan of communication. Like, I don't play about that because my kid is not about to be stuck at daycare, even though they stayed open till 10 o'clock at night. I don't want my kid at daycare by herself sitting there till 10 o'clock. Those are some of the things that I had to deal with, but at the same time, it was only for a period of time and the way that I responded to it is what blessed me later on mm -hmm. because of the fact the matter of we went, our relationship was able to be okay and we was able to you know shake hands walk it out and keep moving yeah, that's like so that's like it patience. do it takes that's time like it's like it's like like yes. to not it. play petty with petty yep. even when it comes to um, your child mm -hmm. that happens so much and it's, it's sad because it's how so many children end up in messed up situations mm -hmm. like you just said it's how so many kids wind up at daycare and I apologize if I'm getting a little uh, yeah. up there <laughs> but um, it, it happens so many times mm -hmm. that kids get left at daycare till 10 o'clock at night or once um, the daycare closed because mama was supposed to pick them up and mama didn't pick them up so I'm not going either hmm. But How you, you just you know gonna what? be a kid? You know, you know what? So you know what that? You know what that comes? You know what that comes with? I applaud you. I what, what that comes with is is now what you have to think about, and this where the, this where the deep soul searching goes is, what's the common goal? What's, Sweet for your, your for your kids what's to your, be what's, what's, what's great. at you. You mm -hmm. can't think about that. This per, at this time and place, you can't think about that person. Yeah. You have to think about what you would do. What mm -hmm. what what's your responsibility? Yeah. At the end of the day. My the mother of my children, I had to call her baby mom. We got all that. Mm -hmm. Mother of my children, we talk about certain stuff like that, and I tell her like, you know, you guys want all these rights. You want the total right. They give they get the female the total right package having them, but you don't want to step to that plate. Mm -hmm. When you take all those rights, you're taking up that responsibility too to make sure when I can't be there or when I want to be petty that you have to do it. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like that's unfair, but that's it's unfair to give you all the rights too. Starting off. So when you want to be the boss, you got to pay the cost. And that's just in the world, period. We got to stop giving excuses on both ends. Correct. But when you take up that role, when I when I want my kids, and I want to, I take the whole role. I don't, she, I just got my kids the other day. You don't send them with nothing. So when I want to talk and I want to say, I'm going to make sure I do do it too. And that's where, that's where it, it comes at the end of the day. I'm not going to worry about your petty because these are my kids. Mm -hmm. And they come before your petty. Mm-hmm. So that's how I can deal with the petty. I got my petty moments, mm -hmm. but that's how I can deal with it. My kids come before your petty. Yeah, you got to always be able to just throw that in your head. Even in the middle of the argument, yeah. you got to kind of stop and throw that in your head. Yeah, um, yeah. Before, um, anything else? Cyrus? Oh, you know, I know you've been over here a little quiet. I'm sorry, I'm taking that game. Sorry, listen, I'm sorry, taking that game. I was just going to say that. Like, I know I've been quiet, but listen, I'm just trying to listen to everything before I Speak Have and you say heard something any of crazy. these things before? Man. Now, Cyrus don't got no children, you all. Uh, kids, but we still want his only perspective. Got a, I got a couple friends with kids. You got like, even when my, nephews. It's just weird because even when my friends, my friends, you know, that I grew up with when they had kids, it's still like I'm kind of. I don't know. I'm like, oh, I don't know about babies. I don't want to. I don't want to break it. You know, I don't want to break it. It's like, you know, I was up with one of my friends. So I'm like, hey, it, can he walk? She's like, yeah. Say, I've been walking since nine months, and I'm like, oh wow. I never even knew. I don't know when kids start walking. I don't know. I don't know nothing. So. Do you want kids? Oh yeah, definitely. I want kids. I want to get married, but. Do the, do that drama it's, scare you though? The parenting drama. Well, it doesn't scare me. Me because well, hopefully, I mean, I can 
go into it with someone that I trust <laughs> right. and not be super petty right, with, you know, right, somebody, right, right. something yeah, that, yeah. you know, someone, that, someone I've been on an agreement with, you know, but yeah, I, I definitely hear about, you know, drama, but I don't know, I'm I'm hearing the ins and outs like right now, so that's why I'm just, I'm tuned in, you know, I'm listening to <laughs> so what you gotta say, oh, what he's talking about, what she's doing, I'm, I'm taking yeah. it all in, so, so that's what's up, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks for giving us that um, perspective on that. Um, so coming up, we are going to continue talking a little bit about co-parenting, but we also going to be getting to the sticky icky of child support. We're going to have um, some more with our guest, Lay, and of course, all of your hosts going to be here. So y'all stay locked in right there. Well, let's talk. I am Miss Wani with Let's Talk. Um, today we are at Parent Trap. So I have with me my co-host as well as in addition to some more guests, um, our guests here from Parent Trap. And what we are going to do now is a light discussion on parenting as well as men versus women. When I say men versus women, I'm talking about the differences that we go through on a daily basis when it comes to our pride, when it comes to our emotions, when it comes to um, dealing with our children. So we're going to touch a little bit on parenting, but we are also going to go into um, differences between men and women. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming out today. Today, um, and joining Blessed Women as well as Let's Talk um, for this event. Um, so yeah, um, to get started, um, we have topics as well. Our topics are communication, discipline, the core, and um, expectations. So we are going to start with communication. Um, and I'll just kind of put it on the floor. Um, communication. So when we talk in communications, we're going to talk about um, the kids. We're talking about parenting, but we're also talking about communication versus well, with men and women. Um, would anybody like to touch on that and just some struggles or some differences that you guys think um, that you go through on a daily? I, I would. Um, I'm not going through that stuff now, but um, my last serious relationship um, I believe was filled due to communication. Um, if we were living together, there would be a lot of things like such and such at work said this and such and such at work said that and, you know, versus whatever, you know, me and that individual had already, you know, discussed. And then they would go back talking to their mother and, you know, so much outside stuff poured yeah. into the relationship. Yeah. Thus far, breaking up the communication that's supposed to have been between, between me and people. that individual, which by far to me was the biggest issue that we had in our relationship, which made it go downhill from there. Yeah. So communication is, is very, very important. Yeah, that's one of the also one of the reasons why we start with communications, um, because communication is kind of the key. It's it's, it's the the start of it all. In order to get anywhere in a um, a relationship or with parenting, you have to start with communication. Those two parents have to be able to communicate. Those two partners have to be able to um, communicate um, very good. And then also how you said about bringing the outside parties in. Um, that's a lot of the issue a lot of the time bringing the outside party in or listening to the outside party um and what they're saying or even letting them know your business mm -hmm. um a lot i know a lot of people um go through that mm -hmm. um would anybody else like to touch on that or even uh, when it comes to your kid i'm letting you go first i know you're gonna <laughs> get on me i'm letting you go first <laughs> um my experience with communication in general um I am a planner, so I have my stuff planned out like weeks of time in advance. So then I'll kind of like drop the, or not drop the ball, but drop a hit like, hey, you know, I need you to pick up Hunter, my child, uh, because I have to work late. So it's communicating to the individual or the father of my <laughs> child um, that this needs to be done. And it was effective because if he couldn't do it, either his mother would do it or auntie or niece or even I would have backup plans with other people. So I think that communication is vital. Um, even just in general, you know, with men, it takes some 
sometimes, in my personal opinion, it takes to say things maybe three or four times for it to kind of register. Um, because it's not saying that they're not listening, but they forget. They got things going on. They're trying to handle the household and stuff like that. So um, it's just kind of like a little reminder and you can't get frustrated. You just got to, you know, say what it is and keep it rolling. That's what's yeah. up right there. Yeah, I would agree. Um, if I touch on communication, I think it's levels of it with the person you're dealing with. You know, some, some people, you don't got to tell them nothing. They just know, know who you are. You know, zero communication. Um, I'd have been in a sim similar situation like that where um, I just knew when my girl needed some uh, gas in her car. I just knew when my girl needed, uh, she was hungry. I just knew, you know, pretty much I had it down packed. Um, but when you have relationships where you don't know that person as well and, and they don't know you as well, then communication is definitely a vital, a vital part of the relationship. Um, I think sometimes it ain't, it's not what you're saying, it's how you say it. You can have that communication and you can be able to tell that person what you want them to do or what you need them to do, but if you tell telling them, like demanding them to do it, it still might not get done. You yeah. still will drop the ball in communication. So communication is broad. You can be able to talk about it and, and like I said, remind that person, but <clears throat> you gotta first understand, like, okay, for instance, this situation we in now, you know, this I, I had a lot of people that could have should have came or could have came. But if it's something they wanna do, no matter how much I communicate that to them, I gotta know who I'm communicating it to. I gotta know the person I'm dealing with. So I think communication goes to the people knowing that person. But also so, how you said about um, getting it, how you give that communication? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would I would agree that's um, that part on about yeah. getting people out and stuff like that. How you mm -hmm. how you do things for that such. But also um, when you say that, I would like to just touch on how you talk to your children. Um, I know recently um, with the Nike ad and how they came out um, with all the different people they show LeBron and um, the football player and um, Serena. Mm -hmm. um, so. Part of that ad was her dad talking to her mm -hmm. and, and how he talked to her when he trained her was never in a high tone. It was never in a angry tone. It was always a good communication that he had with his daughter. He was always telling her that um, you're going to be this next star. You, you, you're going to go here. Imagine yourself here versus, you know, a lot of people, how they train their kids is. Oh, you messed up. You did this. You shouldn't have did this like that. Mindset. You know, so it's more so of a, a, um, a mind thing. Yeah, it's, it's a mind thing. And, and especially for kids, it's mm -hmm. a mind thing because they may not want to do this sport anymore. Mm -hmm. If you're talking to them like, oh, you messing up. This is that and the third. They may just think they mess up. That's definitely where I coach football. Okay. So that's definitely where you know, you, know the, you know the kid. You know the person. You know the people you're talking to. Mm -hmm. um, I got some kids I can be like, hey, get to it. Mm -hmm. I ain't, they get to it. You got some kids. I gotta look, man. You gotta right. This yep, way. Yep, yep, it's yep. just the person you're talking to, and you yep. gotta know that. That's why um, knowing the people that you're dealing with, whether it's on a relationship, whether it's a business, whether it's just simple high and by, you gotta know the people that you're surrounding yourself around and dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. And um, that that saves a lot of problems when it comes to communication and stuff, because you know that person. You know you can, you, who you can play with, who you can't. I got some guys in my job and talk joke, jokes about all the time, race jokes, whatever. We can do that and we can keep it moving. You got some guys you can't call them the N word because they don't they don't play that. You know, you just know you just know who you're dealing with when you do that. So um, I think when it comes with my kids, I got two daughters, and some days they get they get me, they get me to that level where I'm like, hey, sit it down. But for the most part, I try to be more lenient towards the girls. You know, I, I don't want them growing up knowing that the man, a man is be able to holler at them or. Cuss them out, you know. If I had a boy, yeah, different stuff like that. whole different ball game. Every time I open my mouth oh, to him, why? I'm gonna be. I think uh, this the boy is, is, is. You just have to be tough on them. Uh, I think this world we in now, when it comes to boys, they 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 taking their manhood from them. They 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 encourage them to do stuff that females should do. The clothes they wearing, the way they carry themselves, the way they talk. When I was taught to give a, a guy a handshake, it was firm, it was nice, it was straight in the eye. Correct. Kids now, it's like father who's gonna look at you. It's, and that's female stuff to how I was brought up. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not my everybody's opinion, but to me, that's what females do. When a man walk up to you, you a handshake, look in your eyes, a firm handshake, it's always with the right hand, not the left. No, they I think they don't know that. Female. So when it comes to my, my son, I want to believe that uh, by that example. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure he know that that's, that's not a, a, it's not a room for error there. Right. You know, when you play with kids or you give them that, that certain tone of voice, they think, oh, dad's not serious about that. So some, some stuff I tell my daughters, they don't think I'm serious because my voice is not loud or I don't get stern. <laughs> when I get stern, they know, okay, dad, 
he ain't playing about not touching his smoke control or his TV or his game, or he's not playing about touching that plug or touching the hot stove. Mm -hmm. But I might be cool about getting your shoes for to go outside and play, or I might be cool about picking the, the toys up off the middle of the floor. Mm -hmm. Oh, just pick the toys up, but touching that plug, I might say, pick the toys up, or don't touch that plug. So it's a different different level of tone of my voice when there's different things going on. So that's why I say it's just with, 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 with males, I think you got to be a little stronger on them to make sure you leave by that, especially in the world we live in now. Today. Yeah. I guess my question being with that being uh, not boy versus girl, but in a sense of couldn't that have started at a younger age necessarily because now you're trying to wait until maybe they're five or six to kind of be a little bit more stern or use that tone of voice. But at <clears throat> Two, you could tell them in the plain same voice that I'm speaking in now, hey, I need you to pick up your toys. And your level of voice doesn't change, but hey, I need you to go get your shoes. It's still the same across the board because what you're telling them is communicating the same way. You don't have to necessarily raise your voice to get your child to do it. Or I also feel like when you said with the uh, with the son, if you had one, um, the fact of the matter uh, that you need to be a little bit more stern with him, I think, it, or tough on him. I don't think necessarily you have to be tough on him, but there is a way of doing things and communicating and talking at the same level without raising your voice to say, hey, look a man in his eyes when you shake his hand. Do it with the right hand, not the left hand. But it's just the way, like we said at the very beginning, the way that you communicate mm -hmm. is if yeah, you started at two or one pressure. or however, yeah. it can still relate until they're, you know, 26, 27, yeah. because I've caught myself where I'm too hard on my daughter and she's a girl and she, she now she picks up on, oh, well, mommy's mad like earlier today she was like mommy are you, or Bebo are you mad at mommy because we were kind of we weren't tit for tat but it was just we were having a discussion in our voice race so she thought that we were upset with one another and that wasn't the case mm -hmm. um so I had to regulate and he had to regulate like no my tone of voice doesn't justify that I'm upset with mom it's just the fact that a matter of how we were communicating to her it made her nervous like something's going on and yeah. I don't want anything to go on between my yeah, mom and my dad up on that. yeah so yeah, yeah. yeah well yeah. definitely well definitely with the kids you gotta definitely yeah, be on top of that I'm going through a um, communication problem now with the kids because now they have seen you know this relationship between their mother and their father goes sour and you know they're little kids little kids don't understand that at all so now i find that me and my oldest child who was nine and a half we're butt kids now we're butt kids and she honestly you know i really feel she's sincere she does not know that she's not understanding mom you know i'm i don't mean to be disrespectful i don't mean to raise my voice at you but now i'm you know, with her being at that age, I'm caught by myself trying to figure out, well, how do I communicate with this child who is about the same height as me without, you know, going overboard? You know, I don't want her to feel like, you know, I hate her or I don't want her to feel like, you know, mommy wants to hit on you or mommy wants to scream and holler at you all the time, you know. So now I'm stuck myself in a communication problem trying to voice to my daughter look this is not how you talk to me this is not how this should be but i'm in a broken home situation now, i think a lot and of the people father is not around and it's just when they get older myself, trying to figure this out as kids get older though you'll find that the communication becomes different because now you're talking to them different because not only are they have the influence from inside the house they have influence from outside the house as well so they may hear different conversations in school or different activities that they're in and how those kids talk to their parents and then like you just said about being inside that broken home so it also depends on what they seen going on before that home was all the way broken so the things that was going on inside of there but i think definitely as they get older that play a role and then that kind of ties back into when he was saying about the um the girls versus boys and how people raise them and that kind of take it back to when the mamas was telling the girls oh you got to come in the house at 11 o'clock but the boy can come in there too you know mm -hmm. so it is i think as as they get older all that kind of changed because then it became all right my now we both 18 why he can't why i can't come in the same mm -hmm. time that he come in i just think as as they get older that you know certain stuff changed the communication changed um but I, I just want to piggyback and go back um, about the girls versus boys. Because I have, I have a little boy. Now, I totally understand what people be saying about the being tough on guys and this, this, that, and the third. But that definitely, definitely, definitely goes overboard in a lot of guys. A lot of guys go overboard with that being tough. And that's how some younger um, boys go south with the 
being tough and being hard and what they can't do and what they can't do um, when it comes to crying or when it comes to them having emotions and things of that such. So that's why I agree with Lay when she said not tougher, but maybe different. You may raise your daughter a little bit different than what you would raise your son, but I wouldn't agree with tougher. You want to get on both that same love, that same care, um, but you, you do want to show that young boy how to be a man. Then you want to show that young girl how to be a girl. You go ahead. So, so I wasn't going to originally say nothing, but you uh, ain't like that. Everybody is going to say nothing. Because I was, I was going to, I was going to be first to sit back and you know wait till last minute. All right. So the reason why there's a difference between how we raise a boy and how we raise a girl, it's the same way with how a female raises a girl and raises a boy. Like there are principles to raising a boy, just like there's principles to raising a girl. Like when you're raising a girl, you tell her like, hey, you know, make sure that when you sit when you sit down, your legs are closed. Right. Mm -hmm. It's no different when we tell a boy like, hey. When you shake somebody's hand, you look them in the eye. Right. Or, you know, um, when you want something, you speak up. Mm -hmm. Hey, I need help. Or, hi, I need help. Like, mm -hmm. there's a difference to it. Mm -hmm. So, um, the toughness is really just, it's not really like, it's just really a culture that, yeah. that African American people have, period. But if you really think about it, it's not really just our community. It's nationwide now. Yeah. It's, just, it's just the concept, period. And... I think what happened is now we're making it as people we're making it that oh we're making it to something that's negative when it's really something positive and beneficial mm -hmm. um because when you think about it when when you take a stigma that's supposed to be all right boys are supposed to be are supposed to be raised tough or raised hard you can also have that firmness and still tell them that hey it's okay to cry there's nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. like there's no different there's nothing wrong with you know and i'm not saying uh, like, you know, jack a child up, but there's nothing wrong with disciplining a child and then letting them know, hey, the reason why this happens is because, you know, when I was trying to do it this way, there was a communication. The whole concept is, is uh, when I was raised, it was like, you know, hey, I'm going to whoop you. I ain't really got to tell you why. You know, yeah. just know that right. it's coming, whatever. Like but now that I'm in the social work field, I see why, okay, yeah, I can whoop my child, but then I can also come it's back and tell them, like, hey, you know, yeah. this is why you got this whooping. This is why this is this is why you know this is why um daddy yelled at you or this is why you know mommy you know backed you up in the corner and yelled at you and told you going it's because when i tried to you know do it one way you didn't you, you weren't receptive yeah. of it that allows you to still have that communication with your child mm -hmm. that allows you to you know to still be firm and let them know that hey i'm an alpha male in this house my mama said all the time i brought you in this world i'll take you out i'm 25 years old but I know that, you know, my mama can say something to me and I'll be like, all right, mama, I'm a grown man. Mm -hmm. I still may feel some kind of way, but that's mom's. Mm -hmm. Same thing with dad. Me and my dad, you know, we ain't always been cool. We had our times, you know, growing up, whatever, but that's still my pops. So he can say stuff to me and I'll be like, all right, man, you know, whatever. I'm going to respect it. But it'll never be a time where it'll be like, who who you talking to is I think. So uh, it's nothing. it's nothing wrong with the mindset of being tough on your kids or being, you know, hard on your child. I encourage it because when you don't, what happens is you get you get the negative stuff that you don't want. And it's like if they're if a child is showing you these symptoms now, why not stop it now? Versus like Lay said, um, can't you do it at two? No, you can't do it at two because if a child's not talking back to you at two years old, how can you stop it then? But a child sh technically should be speaking at two at least saying yes or no to understand daddy doesn't like it when i touch the cord or daddy doesn't like it when i grab the remote or daddy asked me to go get my shoes i can understand that's the thing but i feel like also we always put this thing as as a, a child cannot understand a child can understand what you teach them if you're not challenging them at a young age yeah. you're not going to get them to progress at an older age because a two-year-old or yeah a, let's let's just jump into a one-year-old will know the difference um, just like a three-year-old would if mommy said no mommy said no or if daddy said no daddy said no th It's still there, but we keep saying that the child doesn't understand It's not the fact that the child didn't understand you as a parent didn't challenge your child to understand what you're asking them but to is, do. I, I want to piggyback on what um, Wani said earlier about um, As they the age as they grow older then we go into different stages of communication the same daughter that I just spoke about when she was the age or two, she was, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, hi, thank you, this, that, and the other, all the things that she was supposed to do. It wasn't until she got, like you said, around other kids, around other influences, so, you know, everything, her whole world collapsed, and that her, it, her attitude started changing, and I noticed 
that the things that I had taught her at two and three, she no longer does. And it's hard to reteach it now because now I need to get to the source of what's the problem. That's what that's one thing we have to do, get to the source. So kind of discipline. So that takes us into our next topic of uh, discipline. I think that's kind of.